Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master looking at God's Word. Thank you for joining me today as we continue our theme from yesterday, the serenity prayer, how to have peace when life is going to pieces. Yesterday, we had the introductory lesson on the serenity prayer. We, we learned that it was written by a great scholar, biblical theologian uh, named Reinhold Niebuhr. And uh, Reinhold Niebuhr wrote this prayer as a pastor for his parishioners during the time of the Great Depression. And um, when people's lives were going to pieces and he was trying to show them that this is how you can have peace when your life is going um, to pieces. Now, I omitted reading the scripture yesterday so let me read the scripture that I should have read yesterday. So let me read it today. Here's the scripture that I think is a serenity scripture. It says in Psalm 46, verse 10, let go of your concerns. Now that word concerns means your worries, your anxieties. Let go of your anxieties. Then you will know that I am God. Basically, it's saying that um, you are not God. Uh, the, 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 the role and position of God is not vacant. There's no vacancy in the Trinity. There's no Father, Son, and Kevin Cosby. You can put your name there. There's no vacancy in the Trinity. Let go of your concerns, then you will know that I am God. I rule nations. I rule the earth. We don't. You know, there's some things we cannot change, but God can. Now, this serenity prayer is such a powerful prayer because... Um, it, it, it is a functional prayer. It is a relevant prayer. It is a prayer that all people of all faiths can pray. That's why I love it. The beautiful thing about the truth of God is the truth of God fits everybody. So regardless if you are a person of faith or a person of no faith, you can pray this prayer. In fact, it is prayed twice. It is prayed twice at Alcoholic Anonymous meetings. Alcoholic Anonymous meetings opens up with the serenity prayer. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, the wisdom to know the difference. It opens up with this prayer and it closes with this prayer. And it's a powerful prayer because it, it's, it, it, it suggests certain things. It implies certain things about peace and a sense of untroubledness, which is what serenity is all about. And here's what it suggests. First of all, that God wants us to be peaceful. God wants us to be peaceful. And as I said yesterday, peace is not the absence of trouble, it's the presence of God. If you're trying to find a situation where there's no trouble, you will never find peace because there will be trouble in some way, somehow, somewhere, everywhere you go, you're going to experience some level of trouble or challenge. So peace is not the absence of trouble. It is the presence of God or the presence of resources that God gives us in order to meet the challenges of life, the demands of life. God wants us to be peaceful. Here's something else I think it implies, and that is serenity and peace is a choice. Hello, somebody. Let me put it another way. You are just as peaceful as you choose to be. You are just as happy as you choose to be happy. The power of the serenity prayer is that it puts the locus of control when it comes to peace and untroubledness in your hands. So many times we think that our peace is predicated on what someone else does. But your peace is not in your boss's hands. It's not in your relative's hands. It's not in your children's hands. It's not in your sisters and brothers or your cousin or whoever. Your peace is not in anyone else's hands. Your peace is in your hands. So this prayer is an empowering prayer. You have to make peace your choice. You have to say, I choose and really mean it to be at peace. And then thirdly, not only does God want us to be peaceful, and not only uh, is peace a choice, but God wants us to do our part. There's a part we have to pray play if we're going to be peaceful. 
You know, so many times we think that everything is up to God. When God is saying, look, uh, uh, without me, you cannot. Without me, you cannot. But without you, I will not. Because peace, you have to cooperate. If you want God to operate, you have to cooperate. Now, every day of our life, we have to decide something. We have to decide who is going to be in control. In the, in the 30s, it was the depression. Everybody was going through an economic depression. And for many, they felt that the, the depression was in control and that the banks was in control and that the government was in control. Therefore, since the government and the banks is in control, that means that my peace is being controlled by someone else. But what does Psalm 46 verse 10 say to us again about who is in control? Let go of your concerns. Then you will know that I am God. I rule the nations. I control the events. I rule the earth. I am in control. And every day of your life, you have to decide who is going to be in control. Now, you've got two choices to that answer. Who will be in control? Either you're going to be in control or God's going to be in control. You're going to be in control or God's going to be in control. And the serenity prayer, our serenity only comes when we allow God to be in control. Now, when we face out of control situations, and we usually do, usually when we face out of control situations, and we will have some situations that are out of our control. I mentioned some of them yesterday. But when you have an out of control situation, usually we do one or two extremes. We either try harder to control them because we are control freaks. I'm going to I'm going to make this work out and I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to force the issue because you are a control freak. Do you know that? Do you do you behave that way sometimes? I know I do. That's why we we have long arguments with people, because we're trying to convince them uh, so we can be in control. So we have these long arguments with people won't end because you got to have your way because you only feel good when you are in control. Look, there's some things that are out of your control and you and to try harder to put them in your control only leads to utter frustration. And then many of us go the opposite extreme. We don't try to control things that are uncontrollable. We just when we feel like we can't control it, we just give up. Say, well, I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about the fact that I don't have a job or, or there's white supremacy in this world and, and there's racism in this world and there's sexism in this world and there's homophobia in this world and all the other isms in this world and ageism in this world. I can't do anything about it. So I might as well just give up uh, and, and, and have a pity party with a whole lot of balloons. And we either go to one of those two extremes. We either try to control things. I'm going to control it. I'm going to control it. And we get frustrated because we can't. Or we go to the opposite extreme and say, I'm going to give up and have a pity party. But again, what does Psalm 46 and verse 10 tell us to do? Let go. You let go. Hallelujah. You let go and you let God in other words, the serenity prayer is basically a prayer of surrender. Surrender. G giving it up, saying, God, I've done everything I can do, but I can't do anything about this situation. So, God, I'm going to give it to you. Whatever it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I'm giving it to you. And I'm praying, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept, to accept, to accept, to accept the fact that I cannot change this. And if you give it up to God, you let go and let God, then God will say, you give it to me and I'm going to give you something in exchange. If you give what you can't control to me, and this is what I'm going to give you in exchange. I'm going to give you peace and a sense of serenity so you can go on with your life. And I'll give you the power to keep on moving with the things in life that you cannot control. So to summarize, listen to this. Only control what is controllable in your life. 
only control what is controllable in your life. And then when you find those things that are not controllable, people, circumstances, the world in which we live, those things that are not controllable, give them to God. Give them to God. Let go and let God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you as we are unpacking uh, this powerful prayer um, that it's speaking to us. And um, right now in our minds, we're letting go of some things and giving them to you. Once we give them to you, help us to give them to you permanently and trust that you will take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me on another powerful point to ponder. Look, everybody needs a church home. And if you don't have one, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us here, uh, newstart at ssclab.org, and we will get right back with you. Thank you so much again for being with me. I hope you have a blessed day today. We'll pick up on this theme tomorrow. But until then, don't forget that in the midst of COVID-19, to stay safe, stay sane, and remember that God is in control. God really is in control. I'll see you tomorrow.